If you grew up out here in the desert, there's a chance Impreza and Evo were your first words. Yeah, that's cute and all, but what nobody told you was in 1988, Toyota became the first Japanese manufacturer to crush the European reign in WRC. Before Subaru and Mitsubishi with a turbocharged all-wheel drive car known as the Toyota Celica GT4. We are on the dirt. It's a rally car. We're on the dirt where it's supposed to be. So let's get behind the wheel and go for a drive. Today is a good day to be alive, you guys. You'd think by now, after like four or five years of doing this show, that I would have driven all of the greats from the 90s to come out of Japan. But I haven't. Case in point. This is a 1996 Toyota Celica GT4, imported fresh off the boat from Japan. So under the hood is the 3S GTE 2-liter turbocharged engine from Toyota. The same 2-liter turbo <laughs> as is in my uh, 94 MR2 Turbo. You know, full-time all-wheel drive. The Celica GT4, uh, in all its trim levels over the years, is a homologation rally car. And now, for those of you who don't know what that means, basically, for WRC, the regulations state that the manufacturer must make a significant amount of production road-legal spec versions of the rally car to sell to the public in order to compete in the World Rally Championship. So, Toyota went ahead and made, in this for this particular generation, which ran from 94 to 99, uh, Toyota made 2,500 of these. Very limited production, especially for a 90s Japanese car. Cameron has gone ahead and actually done a complete vinyl wrap. The very last livery that this vehicle was ever fitted with during a win in WRC. He put his name and his wife's name on the car uh, so <laughs> they can keep him accountable in the town he lives in, which is hilarious. I really like that small town, you know, he can't get too out of control with the car. You guys know about the infamous Group B, right? So after that outright chaos in the early 80s, Group A became the new standard, which is where the GT4's playground was. You can think of it as a seed that was planted in the WRC, growing the Japanese renaissance of rally cars into the 1990s, which includes, yes, the Evo and the Preza. While the early generations built success in competition, the final generation, the ST205 I'm driving now, would be the final GT4 Toyota ever built. Uh, it's a factory car. This thing is bone stock. Now it's been refreshed with like OEM parts, but as far as the engine goes, it's bone stock suspension. As far as I know, it's also factory and everything that makes a Celica. <laughs> a really fun car to drive on loose surface. Being an all-wheel drive car, this is very fun. It's very loose. It's extremely loose. Great power band. Being a stock car, there's, there's no compromise. Like it's very predictable, especially in the way it delivers power. Reminds me of when I imported my MR2, Bone Stock 3S GTE is such a smooth engine as far as turbo engines go. And it's not a it's not a twin turbo setup, it's not a sequential setup. So there's nothing inherently, you know, very smooth about the engine. It's just the way the, the turbo's matched with the engine, 
um, the twin entry turbo on the 3S GTE. <laughs> Constantly wrestling the steering wheel. Torque comes on very smooth. It's extremely linear. It's, it's really responsive, you guys. It's really responsive. And you can literally ride the, like it's difficult once you're in understeer to get out of understeer. But once you're just riding the line of like constant adjustments on the edge of oversteer powering out of the corner, my God, is this a fun car. <laughs> a winning WRC homologation car and I'm driving it in its natural habitat. <laughs> you can just like huck it into a corner. Just huck it. Solid brake pedal feel. Uh, this generation 3S GTE under the hood actually has an air to water intercooler, uh, which actually bumps up the power to 252 horsepower, which is what this car has from the factory. Oh, I need to drive more rally cars. Everybody out here in the Okanagan loves rallying and uh, I'm kind of convinced it's the way to go, you know? Oh yeah, oh my God. Lift off oversteer for real, you guys. Wow. So the interior on this car is actually very similar to a uh, Toyota Supra, Mark IV Supra, honestly. There's a lot of cues, you guys could probably see design cues, uh, reminiscent of that interior. Oh my God, this is fun. <laughs> Which is cool, but it's very simple. It's all black, all like, you know, 90s vinyl Toyota. Uh, you've got a simple three-spoke steering wheel here. So the rally pedigree in Toyota and the Celica go way back, uh, about as far back as Mazda with the 323 rally cars. In 1995, Toyota Team Europe was under fire after an illegal device was used on the turbo restrictor in the GT4 rally cars. It was used to bypass the power regulations of Group A, and it included a spring-loaded device designed specifically to conceal it from the FIA. These cars had about a 50 horsepower advantage over the competition, thus leading to a one-year ban from the WRC. And uh, for that, Toyota was effectively banned the FIA president at the time stated that it was the most sophisticated device they have seen in 30 years of motorsport. So rock on Toyota. I mean, I'm not, you know, cheating isn't, isn't a good thing. You know, that's a bad thing. But now in hindsight, to look back, I mean, they were pushing boundaries with this platform and this chassis. And in fact, this car, the homologation version on the road was fitted with all the correct fittings for the anti-lag system that Toyota actually introduced with the rally car, they were the first to have anti-lag in WRC, or I think period. And then other manufacturers caught on and then it was then introduced in their cars as well. But all these things that Toyota was pushing with this, it really helped push the sport forward. It really did. So to get a guy like Cameron, who's brought this car in from Japan, sworn to keep it as factory as possible, then went ahead and done this incredible livery on the car. Yeah, the tail like wags a little bit when you're powering out of the corner. It's got a lot of torque. It's a very mid-range kind of punchy engine. So once the turbo hits full boost right around kind of like 3,500 RPM, it's super torquey from 35 to kind of 55. And then if you ring it out past, you can go up to a about 7,000 if you really want to, uh, and you should, obviously. <laughs> but it's a very torquey engine, so you gotta be careful when you're exiting corners or it can and will get away from you for sure, but steering is incredibly responsive. I honestly do not have a bad thing to say about this car. I really don't. Uh,
Oh yeah, that was sideways. Woo -hoo! Unfortunately, no jumps, you guys. I guess that's the next logical step. Woo! <laughs> Oh man, pardon my uh, pardon my giggling, you guys. But if you were here, you'd get it. You really would. Another feature on this car that Cameron has not decided to remove, which is great, is this OEM head unit here. It's called the KVT fifty twenty, and it had factory satellite navigation in nineteen ninety five. And it also had a, a television antenna factory from Toyota. It's crazy, it's got a color screen. So Cameron's actually gone ahead and uploaded uh, old rally videos of the GT4 to play on the screen, which is hilarious. Great gimmick, I love it. I love it. This like embodies everything about Toyota 90 WRC pedigree into like a cool street car. You can still drive, but that holds all this history in it, you know? One of the greatest rally cars of all time, uh, and this road-going homologation car is one of the greatest road-going all-wheel drive cars to come out of Japan in the 90s. Sure, it's sad that the Celica went on to basically die a slow and painful death, um, <laughs> let's be honest here, but the beautiful thing is that now we are actually able to import these vehicles into Canada and the United States now to what they were intended to be enjoyed as, which is a crazy, crazy rally car. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Very special, uh, very special occasion today and I cannot thank Cameron enough for the opportunity. I, I really appreciate it, man. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in the future with this car. I hope it serves you well, as I think it will. And uh, yeah, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit me up on Instagram and you can see what we're shooting on a day-to-day -day basis. Some behind the scenes stuff there as well. Uh, we do also have 3S GTE engine code jet tags and a couple TRD products as well on our site shop.roadsandtravel.com you can check those out i'll give you 10 percent off those items if you want for those of you watching this video we'll see you next time